the anatomy of the femoral sheath. You're not going to be a lot of use, are you? Because you haven't got much else other than bones on you. The anatomy of the femoral sheath. So it's down here in the inguinal region. Uh, what is it? What's in it? And why is it useful? And what might I get it confused with? That's what we'll do because there's a lot of similar words around there. Um, and Sam, this isn't, there isn't a lot you can say about the femoral sheath, so don't make this a long one. The femoral sheath, what is it? Well, it's, uh, it's connective tissue. One of the unsung heroes of the body, right? Uh, <laughs> Here's a bit of cling film, that might be. So it's, it's fascia. So we have fascial sheets around the body which hold everything together and help give us our shape and help hold everything together, help everything move. Um, if you didn't have fascia, you'd be quite different. So it's, it's fascia and we need to look down here. All right, so I've taken the... Whoa. taken the gastrointestinal tract out mostly so we can see the bladder structures of the pelvis there and we can see some muscles of the posterior abdominal wall major blood vessels and muscles of the anterolateral abdominal wall so fascia the innermost muscle of the three layers forming the abdominal wall is um, transversus abdominis and it is lined on its internal surface by transversalis fascia, a sheet of connective tissue that is not particularly stretchy and is quite strong and tough and that sort of thing. This big muscle here, this big chunky muscle is psoas major. Psoas major is one of the hip flexors, that means does that. Uh, and this muscle here is iliacus and iliacus and psoas major come together, they get called iliopsoas. And those muscles are also covered in fascia, which you would call the iliopsoas fascia, or the bit over the psoas. The so Do you see, the fascia is sensibly named. So the iliopsoas fascia is helping hold all of those muscle units together. Now here, this is the inguinal ligament. This is like the boundary between the abdomino-pelvic cavity, the torso, and the lower limb. And some things have to pass into the lower limb, like blood vessels and nerves, and we'll get to those. So the inguinal ligament like acts as a, like as a strap, as a retinaculum elsewhere in the body, if you know about that sort of thing. So the inguinal ligament ties everything down at the hip for when we make hip movements, right? It stops it all slipping out. So what happens is, is the transversalis fascia and the iliopsoas fascia, huh, it's like it's doing it already. Come together to form a tube, the femoral sheath. And that tube passes deep to the inguinal ligament and into the upper thigh. Except it's not a tube, it's more of a funnel. That is, it's narrower at the bottom and wider at the top. And it, in the upper thigh, it ends by blending with the adventitia, the connective tissues of the blood vessels. And that is the femoral sheath. It's a fascial funnel or tube deep to the inguinal ligament surrounding the blood vessels, but not the nerve. It's about three to four centimeters long. It's deep to the inguinal ligament. Oh, by the way, see this fascia here? This is the fascia lata the connective tissue, like the fascia covering the muscles of the lower limb and all the deeper vessels and stuff. And um, the uh, femoral sheath is essentially deep to the fascia lata. We'll talk about this whole and other bits and bobs here in a moment. Okay, so the femoral sheath runs deep to the inguinal ligament and is a connective tissue tube connecting the torso with the lower limb. Now there's more to it than that. Inside the femoral sheath, it is divided up into three compartments. So there are three tubes within the tube. And what are in those tubes? The femoral artery in the lateral compartment, the femoral vein 
in the intermediate compartment in the middle. And then in the medial compartment, closest to this side, there is nothing. That's not true, but it's an important idea. So the, the medial compartment is essentially, it's like an, an empty space. Actually, we see, we see lymphatics running in there. We can see a lymph node up there. Um, so we get these deep inguinal lymph nodes. Mm, the, the lymph node, that deep inguinal lymph node, one of like the first ones, the most inferior ones, that we find in the medial compartment of the femoral sheath, um, gets referred to as uh, the lymph node of cloquet, cloquette, cloquet, or Rosenmuller. Uh, but we also have lymphatic vessels in there. If we're adding detail, then in the, the lateral compartment, with the femoral artery, we will also find the femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve. Store that someplace for another day. I'm not going to come back to that. All right, that's it then, right? Femoral sheath and... The, ah, there's more though, isn't there? What about the femoral nerve? Okay, so the femoral artery, what happens is, is the femoral artery is actually a continuation of the external iliac artery. And when it passes deep to the, the inguinal ligament, we change its name and it becomes the femoral artery. Likewise, the femoral vein, when it passes deep to the inguinal ligament, we change its name and it becomes the external iliac vein. But what we don't see on here is the nerve and that's kind of important. I say that it's important because it's easy to get confused around here. But here we go, here's the left side, look. So there's the femoral artery, vein and nerve. So the nerve is lateral, the vein is medial. Femoral nerve, femoral artery, femoral vein. So the femoral artery and the femoral vein are within the femoral sheath in their own compartments but the femoral nerve is not. It passes deep to the inguinal ligament, but it is outside the femoral sheath. It is lateral to the femoral sheath. What is the purpose of this connective tissue? Well, we have, as I said, we, we, when we move this joint, we have these major blood vessels passing from the torso to the lower limb. We do not want them to be kinked like a hose pipe or folded or impeded in any way because they're supplying blood to all these muscles of the lower limb and draining it back again. So the femoral sheath lets these blood vessels slide up and down as we move the hip joint. That's the first one. Now, add a little bit more detail. You remember that I said there were three compartments to the femoral sheath and the lateral compartment holds the femoral artery, the intermediate compartment in the middle holds the femoral vein, and the medial compartment has some lymph nodes but is otherwise empty. Now that empty part, that empty tube, that gets called the femoral canal. So don't mix up femoral canal and sheath, which is very easy to do. So the connective tissue is the sheath. That makes sense. The connective tissue makes a sheath, right? The space within the sheath is the canal, because the canal is the space. Now the reason the femoral canal exists is, partly because of that sliding up and down thing, but also if the blood flow from the lower limb increases, the vein can dilate. So veins, um, veins don't have muscular walls, they can stretch more easily than arteries, right? So if more blood is coming back, the femoral vein can dilate into that empty space of the femoral canal. There's room to it, for it to stretch out into, right? Also, remember that while the blood inside arteries is at arterial pressure, obviously, it's at high pressure, the blood inside the veins is at low pressure. And this blood is being drawn back from the upper limb all the way up the torso to the heart, which is a long way. It's more being sucked up than pushed up, right? Which means that if you were to <laughs> increase the pressure inside your torso through a Valsalva manoeuvre, you know, <clears throat> strain, or if you're lifting something and straining, or you're, you're voiding your bowels, or whatever, if you increase the pressure inside the torso, then it's going to impede the venous return into the torso because the pressure will be too high. And that, that means that the femoral canal then gives some space again for that vein to dilate into. All right, so that's the relevant anatomy, but there's more.
what other terms or phrases around here might we confuse these terms with? Okay, well, um, the other thing here is the femoral triangle. So the femoral triangle describes this region. The femoral triangle is made from the borders of the inguinal ligament, the sartorius muscle, and adductor longus. So the femoral sheath is within the femoral triangle. The femoral sheath is the connective tissue, the femoral triangle is that triangle that we've defined there. But there are other canals, right? Right, let's go back to the other one. The inguinal ligament also has an inguinal canal nearby. So the inguinal canal is different to the femoral canal. The inguinal canal is made from the muscles of the abdominal wall curving around and making a tube. So it's a muscular tube. It is superior to the inguinal ligament and um, it carries the spermatic cord and that sort of thing. So it links the contents of the scrotum with the abdominal pelvic cavity, right? So the femoral canal is within the femoral sheath. It runs deep to the inguinal ligament. So it connects the torso with the lower limb. The inguinal canal is superior to the inguinal ligament. It's a muscular tube and it connects the scrotum or the labia majora with the abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay, we can see part of that here. I said this was the fascia lata, the connective tissue, the fascia covering of the lower limb. Uh, the major vein that we can see here superficial to that is the great saphenous vein, big superficial vein of the lower limb. There is an opening here. This is the saphenous opening or the saphenous ring. And the great saphenous vein passes through that opening. So that's how it gets from superficial to the fascia lata to deep to the fascia lata. And there it drains into the femoral vein. If the femoral sheath has continued down to that point, then the, the great saphenous vein will also go through the femoral sheath to get to the femoral vein. So saphenous opening. But those are the things that you might, uh, well, that were worth knowing about and can get confused and that sort of thing. The femoral canal also has a femoral ring, which is where we see it opening. Why do we care? Hernia. So, um, bowel, because of the high pressures in here, can find itself, find its way out of the abdominal cavity through weaknesses. The femoral canal within the femoral sheath is a potential route for a loop of bowel to pass inferiorly deep to the inguinal ligament and into the femoral triangle, right? So if you, able, if you palpate a mass in the femoral triangle, femoral hernia, whereas the, an inguinal hernia will pass through the inguinal canal, so we'll be in a different place, right? So the femoral canal and the femoral sheath are, are relevant to a femoral hernia, the bowel pushing through that space. Um, also, if you want to access the heart, you could put a wire, a catheter, a cannula, whatever, into the femoral artery, that would then pass to the aorta, so you could access the aorta and the left side of the heart. Or here, you could put a wire into the femoral vein, that would pass to the inferior vena cava, and you could access the right side of the heart. These blood vessels are large, very superficial, so they're pretty easy to access. Um, and you can then access the thorax. Um, also, if you are assessing the blood flow to the lower limb, this is where you find the femoral pulse. So these blood vessels are formed passing through the femoral sheath. The femoral sheath is part of their function, so the femoral sheath is part of that relevant and useful anatomy, right? There you go. That's the anatomy of the femoral sheath. It's connective tissue. And we talked about the femoral canal, which is a space. And the femoral sheath has three spaces in it. And we looked at the blood vessels and what have you. And we linked it up to other things nearby that we might 
confuse it with. Why have you got cobwebs on you? Um, anyway, see, told you I couldn't talk about it for that long. The femoral sheath and stuff in the femoral triangle, femoral canal, femoral... Stop, mate. See you next week. Thank you.